Uh, Lonnie Davis, your response? Well, first of all, I appreciate uh, Professor Gordon and I probably have the same heart and we probably have the same empathy and we probably have the same goals of a two-state solution where people negotiate peace. And I appreciate uh, Professor Gordon uh, is sitting in a situation where his family is exposed to death and I'm sitting safely here in Washington, so I don't mean to be judgmental, and I greatly respect uh, what the professor just said. But I focus on facts, and I'm sorry to say that I must disagree with the professor's uh, misstatement of certain facts or omission uh, might be also accurate. Let's start with the international law issue. It is a violation of international law to deliberately launch rockets from within civilian areas. Uh, Article 53 of the Geneva Accords expressly says that, yet the professor forgot to mention that. It is not a violation of international law to defend yourself if you're not intentionally targeting civilians. The Hamas is intentionally targeting civilians. The professor forgot to mention the distinction between defending yourself and tragically killing civilians in trying to find those who are launching missiles against you intentionally to kill civilians. And finally, and most importantly, I share the professor's desire for negotiations. And as I said, since I was a child, contrary to my father's uh, strong views, I favored a Palestinian state, independent, uh, and I still do. But Hamas's stated public objective is the destruction of Israel. There isn't a civilized country in the world that would sit across the table from a party that is launching terrorists, and it is defined as terrorism to intentionally kill civilians as opposed to military. Nobody denies that's what Hamas is doing. And to sit across the table from an organization that says, we will not recognize you, we want to destroy you, and we will use terrorism against your innocent children is impossible. We did sit across the table from Fatah. We do have the beginnings of a negotiation with Mr. Abu. And we certainly do have uh, the Fatah opposed to the terrorism of Hamas. After all, they were expelled by a military coup by Hamas. So all of the issues that I believe the professor and I have in common, we should at least agree on basic facts and the overwhelming one that I don't think the professor would deny. Hamas's aim is terrorism to kill innocent civilians, and its objective is the destruction of Israel, not Neve the recognition of Israel, not two states that can live side by side in peace. Professor Neve Gordon. The, 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 the problem is the, I, 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 yes, intentions are important, but the facts are more important. And the fact is that Israel is the one that's doing the harm to, more, much more harm to civilians than the Hamas ever did and ever will do. Israel has killed in the past two weeks 275 children and not Hamas, regardless of the intentions. You mentioned the school. Israel's dealing with a propaganda war. Israel is the one that uh, disseminated a video of Hamas, uh, uh, of Hamas shooting rockets from a school, a video that's almost two years old, claiming that the video was taken a, d a day or two earlier. So Israel is in a propaganda war. Yes, the Hamas is fighting out from, from a civilian population, but Israel has the choice whether it's going to bomb the civilian population or not, and it is intentionally deciding to bomb the civilian population. So in terms of intentionality and bombing areas where there are civilians, Israel's acting like a state terrorist. Uh, so if, if, the, if your definition of terrorism doesn't take into account the identity of the actor, uh, and, and state actors can also be terrorists, then when you bomb a school, and when you bomb a university, and when you bomb uh, neighborhoods, and you're killing much more civilians, civilians than militants, then you're doing something that is an act of terror. Uh, and, and I have a problem. I, I think my views are pro-Israelis. I would like to see Israel existing in the Middle East 60 years down the line, uh, and not only the first 60 years. And the only way for Israel to continue to exist in, in, in the Middle East 
is if it changes its its approach towards the region and see itself as uh, as a, a leader of peace and not a belligerent actor in the region. And Israel has been act, living on the sword. Some of our neighbors have been living on the sword. But we have to come out and say we no longer want to live on the sword because those who live on the sword, as the Bible tells us, also die on the sword. We have to come out and say we are willing to talk with our enemies, even with people that say that they do not believe with the, in the existence of Israel. The PLO, you mentioned Fatah, the PLO said that they do not be, uh, believe in the existence of Israel for many years, and ultimately we sat down and talked with them, and they are now considered our Palestinian partner. I believe that if there is a pragmatic side, a strong pragmatic wing in Hamas, that if we start negotiation with them over the years, these people will also uh, uh, agree to the existence of Israel and be willing to live side by side with us. If we do not talk with them, if we continue this cycle of violence, ultimately Israel will be destroyed because ultimately the technological edge that we have over our neighbors will not be me meaningful. So we have to change our approach. We have to be pro. By changing our approach, we're actually pro-Israeli. We say we want to see Israel 100 years from now. And the only way we'll see Israel exist 100 years from now is if Israel makes peace with Syria, with Lebanon, and with the Palestinian people. Professor Neve Gordon and Alani Davis, uh, we're going to break, then come back. Then we will be joined by Congress member Dennis Kucinich uh, speaking to us from Cleveland, one of five Congress members to vote against the resolution in support of Israel. And then we'll be speaking with Jewish women who are standing up uh, to the Israeli invasion of Gaza. One in Toronto, one here in New York. A major protest is planned today outside the Israeli consulate uh, at 5 in the afternoon. Lani Davis is former um, attorney, former special counsel to President Clinton. He is currently an attorney, and he's a senior advisor and spokesperson for the Israel Project. Neve Gordon is in Beersheba, an Israel chair of the Department of Politics and Government at Ben-Gurion University of the Negev. Stay with us. Democracy Now, Democracy Now, Democracy The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Our guests are Attorney Lani Davis, Senior Advisor, Spokesperson for the Israel Project in Washington, D.C., and Professor Neve Gordon, Chair of the Department of Politics and Government, Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Israel, author of Israel's Occupation. Uh, I want to talk about why Israel invaded at this point. What is your understanding of this? Um, they said Hamas broke the ceasefire. Professor Gordon, is that the reason you feel that this happened? Hamas did launch uh, an incredible amount of rockets at the end of the ceasefire. Uh, Israel actually is the first actor that broke the ceasefire on November 1st when it, it attacked in the Gaza, November 4th when it attacked in the Gaza Strip. I think the actual reasons have to do, the two major reasons, with rebuilding the reputation of the Israeli military after its humiliation in uh, 2006 in Lebanon and the, Isra the upcoming Israeli elections. Uh, 
both Labour and Kadima, the two out of the three major parties who were behind in the polls against Bibi Netanyahu's Likud, who was blaming them of being soft on the Palestinians. And I think the timing in terms of the elections, which are on February 10th, was perfect to show that Kadima and Labour that are in party know how to be tough on the Palestinians. And in fact, already in the polls, we see that uh, Labour has uh, added almost 50 percent uh, uh, to what it had before uh, the war began. Uh, so I think there's some cynical uh, political issues and reputation issues that played a dramatic part in initiating this uh, war. I think that Hamas also acted uh, eh, or miscalculated and acted uh, totally wrong that it launched the, the, the rockets on Israel. I think uh, strategically and morally it, it, it was a mistake. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure Israel had to react uh, through such a war. I think through diplomatic means it could have been stopped.